Hi everyone, it's Neil here. Um, so today I'm going to talk to you um, about multi-session. Okay, uh, so uh, first of all, we'll give you a br brief history lesson on multi-session. So um, we've been doing multi-session for, for a number of years now. Um, I think personally I've been doing multi-session um, since Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, essentially where we used to take a, a server OS, um, we used to install the uh, RDSH role um, and then serve public desktop for, for multiple users. Okay, so um, these days we're using Windows 10 or with Windows 11 multi-session to do the same thing. Um, the benefit of that is that you don't need an RDS cal license. Um, obviously the issue is that you have to run that within Azure. Okay, or if you want to run that within um, on prem, you can use something called Azure.hci, um, which is in public preview to run those workloads. And the reason why we do multi session is to really bring down the cost um, and the number of users that we can fit onto the platform as well, right? So um, imagine if I'm provisioning uh, I don't know, 100 hosts, then I need to, uh, if I had a single session desktop for each one of those hosts, then I'd have like 100 users. Um, but if I fit, uh, I don't know, 10 users onto the host then we can deliver a, we can fit a lot more users onto our solution now there are a couple of factors which you need to think about when you're running sort of multi-session desktops um, and the main one is obviously what workload is going to be running on those desktops and also um, the performance okay so obviously um, if you're running a, a single session per user then that user has access to the full resources of that VM right um, but if I'm running a, a multi-session desktop, then I'm sharing that desktop with other users. Okay, so if I'm doing something on that, on that VM, that could potentially impact um, all the other users on that platform as well. So what you run on that workload and the spec of the VM that you run on that workload is really, really important. Okay, so we need to make sure the sizing is correct and we need to make sure the specs are correct and we need to make sure that the application is correct. Um, and there's also other things as well that we need to think about is that how we patch those VMs. We probably use image based management. We need to think about our antivirus and we need to about security and firewalls and all that stuff. So it, it can get pretty complicated. Um, but if you get everything working properly um, and, in, and get really good performance out of it, then you can really drive down the cost per user. Um, to running within your Azure Virtual Desktop environment, okay? I mean, most extreme examples that we've seen, we've seen desktop delivered at like five or six pounds per user, okay? Which is insanely cheap. Like, think about the cost of delivering a laptop or something. And that's why when people ask you, like, why do you, why do you use VDI over a physical desktop? Well, if done properly, I can deliver a VDI desktop a lot cheaper than I can do and then deliver a, a physical laptop device, okay? So... Um, just something to think about there. So the ne next time you're sizing up, you're sizing up a AVD environment, um, just really think about the uh, the multi-session, think about the performance, think about the cost, think about the applications, um, but most importantly, test it, right? And making sure you, you, you test it to make sure that you can fit a decent amount of users um, onto a single VM and you get the VM spec right and you get the applications running right. And if you get all that correct, then you'll have a really, really good solution, okay? Thank you. Goodbye.